when I got over there and took a look at it, the vine started growing at the base of the center tree. And the vine grew up along the center tree. And then as the tree branched out into branches, the vines start going with the branches yeah. and connecting on other trees. So when the main tree fell, the vines brought the other trees down on his property. Yeah. See, I know you understand it when I break it down that way. And when I pulled on the vines, some of the vines were dead. When I pulled on the vine and pulled them out of the tree, the tree didn't move. Because the vine is strong at its length, not, to, not its width. We were able to cut it in half, but not pull it. That's how strong the vine is. So when Jesus started talking to people about a vine, ordinary people knew what he was talking about. And Jesus was master of that. Jesus never sat down with an audience and talked over anybody's head. He was able to look at you and I in an audience and say something where you and I can understand that. Yeah. So if you ever got on your knees and did some planting and you watched that plant grow for three or four years, you know what the root system is all about. Oh. If you ever looked at a tree and you seen a vine, you know that you can climb a tree from its vine. Yeah. You can hold on to that vine no matter how heavy you are and, and climb right up that tree. And Jesus knew that if he talked like this, people would understand that. And there were times when he was misunderstood, but there were times when he explained certain things to his apostles, to his disciples, that as apostles they were going to need to fall back on. And then in John chapter 15 he says, I am the vine, I am the true vine. And remember, we're talking about truth all summer long. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Yes, no. Now, on my property, when something grows and it starts to look funny and the leaves start shriveling up, I water it. I watch it for two days. If the water system doesn't make the, the, the shrub or bush or flower that I planted, and y'all probably saying, Brother Steele, you know you don't plant nothing. <laughs> but y'all, I do. I plant a lot. Just about everything on the property I plant. And now, the supervisor instructed <laughs> Okay, because she ain't getting down her knees doing none of that stuff. And there have been plenty of things I had to uproot because she didn't like where it was. I got ahead of her. Okay, so I just want you to know that much. But everything I planted, I watched for a couple of days. If it didn't work by the water system, I had to go out and I had to snip some things. Because the deadness of the tree will follow the tree and kill the tree. Yeah. That's what Jesus is trying to get them to see. If you don't bear fruit, my father is the vine dresser. If he's looking at you and you're not bearing fruit, if you are a branch that is starting to wither, you're going to affect the main part of the branch. This has to be removed. Now, as a human being, do you understand what I just said? If you are not being effective for God, you're not being fruitful for God, God simply has to come along and move you out of the way. Amen. Because you will become a cancer and you will affect the rest of the main portion of what he's trying to get to grow. Now, the Bible just said that he's divine dresser, so he, got, he has every right to come and do what he wants to do. Amen. Because he planted the tree. Amen. Now, each one of us in creation... God created, amen? amen? Now, those of you who are not Bible students, all you have to do is go back to the book of Genesis, first chapter. You don't see anybody uh, planting anything in the Garden of Eden but God. But God. Amen. And when it was all over, he planted human beings. Amen. And human beings reproduce of its kind. So God has every right to be the vine dresser. So when Jesus is talking these kinds of things, Jesus always makes it clear who the creator is and who creation is, yes. and how creation functions according to that which created it. Amen. Okay? So, intelligent human beings, regular human beings, human beings, people who are not educated at all understand simple analogies like that. Yes. So, I am the vine dresser of the majority of everything that went in the ground on my property. Okay. So, when I come around, the plants know me. The bushes know me. And they know if they don't reproduce, I'm going to move it because they're going to simply die. Now, I've got a couple of things that I've reproduced, re-dug up, and, and moved in another place, and they're dying. No matter how much water I give them, they're dying. Well, they only have five more years left to them anyway, so I kind of like, I guess I sped up the process. But I am the vine dresser. I know what's going on because I planted those shrubs and bushes. 
God planted you as a human being on this world. I know you thought that your mom and dad did. <laughs> but you and I repeat after the original creation of us. Birds recreate of their own kind. Trees recreate of its own kind. Even the fish create of its own kind. It all came from the same creator. You are not the creator of yourself. That's why you must respect and I must respect the creator because he's divine dressed. Now each person in here knows so far what who the vine dresser is, what a branch is, and what vines do and how it feeds the tree. So you just need to ask yourself a question this morning. Is he right? Is he telling me the truth? Am I functioning like what Jesus is talking about here? Okay? Now, it also says, and every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Every time you cut a tree, prune a tree, it gets thicker and healthier. It yeah. It'll grow left, it'll grow right, it'll grow abundantly within itself. And you look around in that whole tree, you can't, that bush, you can't see through it. Because now the leaves are bigger and stronger. Yeah. He cut the old ones that wouldn't produce away. Now, on judgment day, when we all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, Thessalonians said that I don't care if you're deaf, blind, or dumb, the trumpet is going to sound. And I'm going to tell you where in Thessalonians because I want you to read both books. The trumpet is going to sound. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So in the throne room, God is going to say to Jesus, go get the bride. Yes, Lord. If you keep reading these chapters, you will see John mentioning that. Yes, and Jesus said that I am the true shepherd, and I have one flock. So you have to determine as a person oh, sitting here today what he's talking about. Oh, because there's so many trees that are planted in the garden. But only the vine dresser know the tree that he purposed to be redemption. So you need to know that. Now, when God told Jesus to come back for the church, you notice that the Bible never said church is. The church. The church that God knows about. He's the vine dresser. He planted it. Yes. Jesus died for it. He purchased it with his blood. So all of us got to know why we're sitting where we're sitting. Yes, Lord. And we got to know that there is a source that's being connected to us, and it's God. Because not all churches are godly. Amen. You know that and I know that. So on Judgment Day, he's going to send his son for the church. Jesus is going to come and get, his, get the church, and in a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, he's going to take the church back to God. How in the world can you get your act together when you blink your eye? How can you get saved by doing that? Now, I'm a slow blinker because I'm very cautious about how I blink just in case somebody think, uh, take this opportunity to throw something at me. So I usually blink half and half as if I had a stroke or something. So I'm going to go like this, and then this one will follow so I can keep it, y'all. This may be the first opportunity y'all want to get back at me with a tomato or something. But blink your eye and see if you can do all the things that God asks you to do to be saved. You can't do it. And see, when the trumpet is sound and the clouds roll back as a scroll, he comes through and the dead shall rise first, and then those of us who are living shall be caught up in there and always be with him. He's going to take the church back to God as commanded, because God's going to say, go get my church. He's going to bring the church back to the throne room. And according to a first, uh, uh, Corinthians and Second Corinthians, we all going to stand before the judgment to the Christ. Hebrew says that too. And in Corinthians, Paul said to the Corinthians, your lives are going to judge the world. Yeah. So the vine dresser is going to tell you how it's all broken down once again. My son was the source. Yes, no. He was the source that I fed you. And I decided that before the foundation of the world. Yes. You were supposed to grow in him and abide in him so when you got to me, you would be like me. Yes. Amen. Kids are just like parents. 
whether you want to admit it or not, your children are a product of the environment that you provide for them. If you cut, they cut. If you smoke, they smoke. You throw things, they throw things. You cook, they cook. You burn up stuff, they burn up stuff. Jesus acts just like the Father and so did the Holy Spirit. And I just need to throw those things out there so you understand the whole concept of the Bible. So as he's talking, you know what he's talking about. Because one day, just like he was telling them, I'm coming back. I'm here now to be the sacrificial lamb, but I'm going to come back and I'm going to get you. And when I come back, I'm coming back as a judge. you got to know yeah. it was those ten virgins. Remember the ten virgins that was invited to the yeah. wedding? Some came with oil in their lamps, right? They didn't know when the bridegroom was coming. Customary the bridegroom came when he got ready. So five of them did what? They wasn't prepared, as the brother was talking about this morning. So they looked around, they had no oil for their wicks, so they know they had to go somewhere and get some. So they left. When they left, the bridegroom came. When he came, he only let the bride in that had and were ready. And when he went in, the door was locked. So when they got back, they were knocking. Now remember, and I'm going to scare you right now, when all this takes place at the end of the world, and I'm glad you're here so you can hear it, you and I are not going to be in this. The righteous and the unrighteous is going to be this, and our soul and spirit is going to be presented to God. Because remember, flesh and blood blood cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We're going to be in the kingdom of God, and we're going to have our spirit with us. Amen. And while we're standing there before God, have you ever been in court? You know what I'm talking about. When we're standing there before God, God is not going to be smiling. When you got in trouble, and I'm going to help you out with this just in case you, got a, you think God is the big bad wolf. When you got in trouble and mom finally came or dad finally came, were they smiling? Yeah. Did they bust out laughing and they said, <laughs> oh man, look at you, you in trouble again. <laughs> mom and dad didn't say that, did they? No. What have you done? Yeah. Well, see, God will already know what you've done he's and what I've done because he's God. And when we stand before God, God's going to give us our opportunity to say what we have to say. Because guess what? Time is going to be gone. Amen. Yeah. Let's keep going. You are ready. You says, uh, and he prunes it. Therefore, it may, it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because the word which I have spoken to you. So I'm to his disciples right now. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Mm -hmm. If you not abide in me, if you take yourself out of my planting, I will not source you will truly die. Amen. That's why it's important for you and for me to know who I source is. Now before the foundations of the world, the Father and the Son decided this, brothers and sisters and uh, visitors, friends, and you have to know what are you going to do about it. Hmm. You've got to do something about this. Because God loves you, and this wasn't hard, this wasn't easy at all, to die on the cross. It wasn't easy. I wouldn't have done that for you. <laughs> Honestly. I have my offspring here. And my son and my daughter mean more to me than you. So that's why God appeals to me. I wouldn't have asked or told my, my son that this is what we were going to do, I would have found another way. Yes, no. See, I would have had my son die on the cross for people who laugh at me on Sunday morning. Yes. I would have had my son die on the cross for people who spit on spit in, in, in my face. I wouldn't have my son die for people who gonna beat me up all night long. I won't laugh, I won't uh, have my son, require my son to die for people who will take their doctrine and claim it's mine. I'm not going to have my son do that. All these things Jesus endured, and all these things mankind did to him in spite of what he did. Amen. I would have found another way. Amen. And if my son would have verbally cried out to me on the cross and say, Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? Y'all, I wouldn't have did that for y'all. Because if Ellis cries out to me in my hearing, I'm going to respond. And I'm going to respond like a father. But you know what? God responded like the eternal father that he is. Because he created the whole world. And for the first time in deity's existence, 
Jesus and the Father was totally separated. Yes, Lord. And, and you mean to tell me we're going to take that life? God Almighty. And I'm just telling you what you know you would confess to me. You wouldn't have did it for me, and I wouldn't have did it for you. But God is so great in his love for us that for the first time in all that God is and all that God was and all that God is going to be, he separated the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, the Holy Spirit. Amen. and when Jesus cried out on the cross, he simply closed the throne room. Yes, Lord. You should be crying right now. Hey. Matter of fact, you should have a problem breathing like he did. Hey. You should say to yourself, Father, forgive me, for I know what I'm doing. Yes. That's the way we should feel right now. Because from the foundations of the world, he told his son, this is what's going to happen on that day. And you know what Jesus said? I'm going to do it anyway. Because we love him. And if we don't do it, your enemy and my enemy, the devil, is going to laugh in our faces. Yes. From the beginning, why did you create it? Yes. Hey. Hey, man. If you're not a Bible student, when Job, uh, before Job's um, um, co-suffering, God said to Satan, have you considered my son, my servant Job? Yes, Lord. And all the sons of God was coming to God in a throne room, and Satan appeared to him. He said, have you considered my servant? And Satan said, how can I? Got a fence around I know what belongs to me, and I know what belongs to you. Yes! I can't touch him. Amen. God said touch everything he has but his soul mm. because it belongs to me. Yes, Lord. And from that moment on, everything started to happen to Job. Yes, yes, yes. But they yes. couldn't take what God owns. Amen. This morning, yes. this afternoon, yes. at 1220, God owns you as the blood that he purchased on Calvary, has it bought you? Yes. Or are you still under a rental contract or lease contract to the devil? Because hey. see, you are contracted out to somebody Amen. in the spiritual realm. Is it God or is it the devil? Because see, God is the, Jesus is the true vine. God is the vine dresser. Oh, yes. And everything that God has planted, God knows. Amen. The righteous, and the unrighteous. Yes. There's no secret to God with anybody's lives in this room. Now, we keep that from one another. Mm -hmm. But God knows exactly how you feel, yes. what you say, and what yes. you do. So on Judgment Day, you can't keep that from me because he's going to do that. And your story is going to sound like mine if it's not covered in the blood of Jesus. Yes, sir. Just want you to know that. Yes. That's the same old story. Every Sunday, preachers should be saying the same thing about God. Telling the world how loving God is. And getting the world to see and identify with their sins. So people can understand what I need to do to be right with God. Go home. Go home today. After the picnic. You will be full. You have to do something to get things moving around you don't get sleep. Don't you know when you eat and overeat that your body works hard at breaking down the food? So your body's going to work hard today. My body always working hard when I eat. But go home and move something in your yard. Move it. Dig it up and move it. And see how strong it is. And follow the root system until you get to the very end and look and see that at the end of that, you're going to be able to pull it up. Why? Because it's so far away from the main plan. Yes. That's where the devil is. Amen. Where it's loose. <laughs> and where it can't no longer grab root. And that's where he destroys the plant. Now remember, if you put the plant back in the ground, you got to put the root system in that long vine under the ground so it can start rooting again. Yes. If you leave it on the surface, it'll die. Amen. In the beginning of the world, God put 
Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And this is God's plan. This is what he wants. It's his show, so we gotta we gotta go along with his rules. And he told Adam and he told Eve, here are their instructions for the garden. Everything that you need, I've already provided for you. Adam, you didn't ask the Eve, I gave her to you. Take care of her. And everything is perfect. I'm God. You don't need nothing. Take care of the garden. But just like all instructions, and I hope you do this with your children, God had to tell them the truth of the matter. I'm truth. I'm the way. I'm the source. I'm the standard. But I do have an enemy. There is one place in this garden that you don't need to be and you shouldn't go. I put it there. You don't have to touch it, but it is there. Because remember, he gave them a free will. Not all that he gave them, they ended up where they shouldn't have been. And I don't understand that. People with millions of dollars end up drug addicts, end up alcoholics, end up committing suicide with the very thing that they wanted all their life, money. And when they get it, they self-destruct. Imagine when Adam opened his eyes, church. Imagine what he seen. Yeah, Have you ever been to the zoo and you ever seen all those animals? You ever been to an aquarium and seen all those fish? Don't you know not only did Adam see it, he named it. Yes, yes. God said, here it is. I did all the work. I rested on the seventh day. On the Sabbath day, I rested. You name it. Yes. Come and be my partner in this. And everything that Adam named, God made it concrete. And just listen to me. Just listen to me. Don't go over there. Hey. It's not good for you. Amen. Why is it that we must experience the bad to respect the good? Why is it the good is just good? Y'all know how many seasons I got for being hard headed? When my mama told me, don't do this and don't do that, it just seems like what we shouldn't do appeals to us. You know how many stories I can tell you right now where I regret my existence because I did things as a grown man I shouldn't have done? Yeah. When the garden was already prepared for me, before the foundations of the world, Ellis, do this, and you'll be fine. Yes. But you know the same thing that things that he asked me to do, I didn't do. Yes. So I experienced those bad things, and they right in the back of my mind. That file cabinet that's there, every now and then it'll come on, come on, and then it'll show me all the things I did wrong. Amen. God said, I told you yes. so. No. I love you so much. You never had to experience that if you had just listened. Yes. Amen. Amen. And sisters, I have nothing, nothing, nothing at all against you. I love you. Hmm. But when your man tell you something, do it. Because sometimes men, we're not strong. We're not strong. So God's going to work through the wife and Satan is too. Hey. Satan didn't go to, to Adam. He went to his wife. And I'm trying to get you to go back and say, well, how does John chapter 15 have anything to do with this? You need to know these things. So when you read John chapter 15, you understand what he's saying. Satan heard every word that God told Adam before he was even created. Yes, no. Satan's not going to walk up to a man that got an M16 in his hand and a couple of hand grenades, knowing that he's the devil and you would blow him up. He's going to go around you. He's going to flank you. Yes, he's going to get behind you. And in Adam's case, he's going to get right on the side of you where your heart is. Because hey. that's where he was taken from the rib. And guess what? The rib surrounds the heart. God took and made Eve from the very best part of that. 
Don't you and I know that, man? He said, your wife is the very best part of you in that house. Amen. And that she surrounds your heart and it was so with God. Amen. Yes, Lord. Eve, honey. See, God say that. And where was Adam standing right next to you? You know what he said? Honey, we ain't got no business over here. We shouldn't have came over here. But that's not what he said. He wanted to see if anything would happen to his wife. That's arrogance. How many of us as men have left our wives in arms way? I say to Donna in a minute, I don't think we need to be over here. I never forget it. Traveling down south, and we got to Newport Beach, and I was tired. I couldn't keep my eyes open. And Bullet didn't feel like driving. I called the Bullet Beach guy, and he's Bullet. <laughs> now to get tired, we'll get to our destination overnight, over in a minute. I mean, you will wake up if you're there. And that's dangerous. Yeah, yeah. So I wanted to rest. So I pulled in this motel down in Newport Beach. Uh -huh. As soon as we pulled in the parking lot, all this drug acti activity was going on in the corner of the parking lot. You know what I said? Yeah. Donald, we're not spending the night here. It's not safe to be in my family. Yeah. That's what Adam should have did. And if Eve didn't want to go, he should have called her father. Mm -hmm. You know why sometimes y'all don't want to go? Mm -hmm. Call God. And God would came on the scene. I don't know what he would have did. Maybe he gave him another Eve. Maybe he gave him Eden. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he took another rib. I don't know. But I know one thing. God wouldn't have let him get in trouble if he would have called him. Yes, Lord. If you don't call God, you're going to get in trouble. Get in trouble. Call God, you'll stay out of trouble. Yeah. Because it's one thing Satan can't do. He can't walk into the throne room and take what don't belong to him. Amen. 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 And if you are baptized into Christ and you have put on Christ, the Father knows who you are. Because you've done the same thing that Jesus did. And when God looks at you, he sees his son. And when Satan looks at you, he sees God. And in order for Satan to get to you, he got to call the Father. Yes. That's what, that's what he did to Job. He got to get permission from God. Don't you feel good now? But see, I feel good to know that when things start happening to me as temptations, things start happening to me as trials and tribulations, my father gave the permission first, so the only thing I got to do when I'm going through them things is call on the father, and here come. He will make yeah. the devil look like a fool when he's trying to take my life out. Only thing yeah. I do is say, Father, I'm on my knees. I'm tired of the way I'm feeling medically. I'm tired of the way these people are doing me. I'm tired of this boss. And one thing God will say, thanks for calling. I had that in mind. I needed to hear from you. And he's going to say, say, leave him alone. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Leave him alone. And I'm going to look up, I'm going to get another job. I'm going to look up, I'm going to get a better bill of health. I'm going to look up, I'm going to move out of that community. I'm going to look up and alcohol ain't mean no more. I'm going to look up drugs ain't going to mean no more. I'm going to look up cash is going to start flowing around me. And I'm going to know it ain't the devil because all good things come from God. Yeah. And the only thing I got to do is call my father and then that, that swamp will start going through that bond. That's all I got to do, church. My father loved me so much that he died on the cross. You think I can't call my dad and he don't fix the things around me? Amen. My father says, look, look at the grass. I put green on it. Look at the flower. He flies because of me. You mean to tell me you are not much, much, much worth more to me than that. He didn't die on the cross for the animal kingdom. He died on the cross for human beings. Yes, Lord. I hope I said something this morning that got you thinking about the vine. And got you fired up about the true vine. And got you wanting to be with him forever. I know that everything you see looks good. I know that everything you touch it looks good. But guess what? One day we got to leave the flesh, y'all. We got to put it down. Amen. And we got to die. And when we die, everybody on this side always crying, looking at us in that casket. We're gone. Amen. We're standing before God now. Amen. We can't fix what we did. Don't go to them caskets having all those kinds of emotional fits because the person is gone now. They can't come back. And when we stand before God, God is only going to want to know 
Yeah. If you did what I told you to do. Yeah. Amen. And just like a parent. I've got to give you punishment now because it is against my divine nature. Daddy. It's against my divine nature to live with you in the spirit. Amen. So you got to leave. What else? What are you talking about? When Adam and Eve sinned, his best friend, when they sinned, something happened in heaven. Yes. Well, brother, that's not printed. As a mother and father, when the room gets quiet, when the little ones, you can't hear them, what do you do? What do you do as a parent? You get up. You go around looking for little John. Where's my age? Because you know they're getting ready to get in trouble. When Adam stopped talking to God, he got in trouble. God had to go for the first time, go looking for Adam. Adam was already messed up. And what did God say? What did Mama say when she came and you got grits poured all over the floor and spaghetti all over the floor? God said to Adam, what have you done? Hey. And look at the way God said it. Hmm. I told you. What have you done? You just turned the kingdom upside down, Adam. Before the foundation of the world, you were going to do that. Yes, and all those patriarch days, Egypt, Israel, Babylonian captivity, it's just a you know, series. Then we get to the life and birth of Jesus, and then the life of Jesus, and then we get to the cross. All that time and all that human suffering was a true God. Yeah. 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 Verse 36. I'm only going to tell you what God tells you to do. Okay, now you may have heard something different. But I think I have proved to you that what God says is very important to where you're going to spend eternity. Now, you're going to get an opportunity to prove this wrong. It's called the judgment. Okay, but if you want to stay safe, when you get up here with God, you go to the book of Acts, and it's called the Acts of the Apostles. Everything that Jesus had taught them as disciples when they became apostles, they went and taught. The commission that he gave them, they went and fulfilled that commission. So the very first sermon to humanity was done in Acts 2.36. Well, in Acts 1, when they received the whole power of the Holy Spirit uh, to do these things, they started talking to the known world. Okay? Now, if you are one of them people who are religious, well, you have religious people there, and if you go to Acts chapter 1, you will see that, okay? Devout people. And then he will give you a list of all these names of everyone that was created and was religiously known and humanly known right here in the book of Acts. Chapter 1. Then you go over to chapter 2. Peter and 11 stands up, and they have a little sermon, Okay? And these people understood that they crucified the Son of God. So they said, what shall we do? Yeah. What shall we do? So as you go down, you get to verse 36. It says, therefore, let all the house of Israel know for surely that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. All authority was given to Jesus in heaven and, in, uh, and on earth. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? And Peter said to them, Repent, and that every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now turn back over to Mark chapter 16. Just keep flipping it our way down here, because I want to. I just want to show you the truth. Now if you, you can do with the truth what you want to do with it. Okay? But turn back to Mark chapter 16. important. I don't want you to think that I'm trying to get you saved to, to join the church here. I want you to see that what God has said that you and I must do. Okay? This is important.
Mark 16, 15 says this. And he said to them, now right there, your writing should change colors. Your writing should go from black to red. And anything in red is the words of Jesus. So Jesus actually spoke these words. Okay? Now these words are going to condemn us or they're going to save us on judgment day. All right? Now this is what God, the Son of God, said in red. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. He who does not believe will be condemned. Now you need to go home and study that passage. Okay? Because God said, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. You, it was in your Bible, right there in front of you. And he who, believes, he who does not believe is condemned. Now, the last time I checked the English dictionary, condemnation means to separate, to do away with. Yes. When someone is condemned, and when you go to court and you are condemned for the punishment, uh, for the crime that you committed, you are now going to be punished for that crime. Yes. You're condemned to those years. You're off. You're done. You're away from society. And that's exactly what God means. On judgment day, he got a place for you. And that's separate from him. All right? Now, if somebody else yeah. tells you something contrary to the words in red, you need to really, really study with that person and go to the book and see what the Bible says. Okay? Because it's very, very important. Now, go back to the book of Acts. Because this is what he's talking about. He's commissioned these men to go do this. And in the book of Acts, you know, people, it, it was a long time before someone sat in my living room and taught me the scriptures like this. You know, and I, I, I was baffled. Matter of fact, I got mad. I got really upset when they started talking to me like this. I said, wait a minute, that's not what my pastor told me. And I said, that's not what I did. So I said, well, well, well wait a minute, let me examine this because I, I got to find if this is true. I said, okay, let me read the book of Acts and see if they actually did what he told them to do. That was only fair enough for me as a reader. Yes. If God is telling his disciples to do something, well, wait a minute. He died on the cross. He ascended back to the Father. Let me see if they did what he told them to do. So in Acts chapter 1, when they became apostles and the Holy Spirit fell upon them, just like he promised them, well, let's see. So I read all 28 chapters of the book of Acts to see if what he told them to do they did, and I wanted to see if they did it just the way he told them to do it. And that's when I went to my pastor. They made me a deacon, and I wasn't married to this woman. She was one of the pastor's niece. I had no children, and that's one of the quali that's one of the qualifications that a man must be the husband of one wife. He must have believing children. We didn't have yes. no children. And see, I went from ignorant to mad. Yes. Because I read the words of Jesus. And then I got scared. Yes. Because I ignorantly, hypocritically did something I had no business no doing. Business. So now when I read it for myself, I had to ask. So I wanted to see. So I kept reading. Yes. And don't you know, I couldn't find anything that I did written in the book of Acts. Amen. Yes. And let me just work with you right now, because see, I wasn't a stupid Ellis. Hmm. I touch all of it. Hey. I did the Islamic thing. Yes. I did the fire baptized thing. Yes. I did the holiness thing. I did the Baptist thing. I had more religions in my resume. You could it looked like a criminal rap sheet if I did like this. Yeah. And then I got upset when I read this. I said, He only said one thing for me to do. But I did all those things. I went to the altar, took my shoes off, got down on my knees and prayed for the Holy Spirit. Because it yes. said that he ascended on them with tongues of fire. We locked the doors, we locked the windows. I was sweating like a bullet. I'm waiting on the Holy Spirit to come through and land on me like it landed on the men. I couldn't find it. Yes. So I ain't one of them brothers and, you know, that talk that talk. I had to see if this was real because this was my soul. My family was Baptist. Hey, what are you talking about? 
I said that to the Church of Christ minister. You have lost your mind. You couldn't find it. And then I started crying when I read this stuff. Then all the house of Israel know surely that God had made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. And when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, Man and brother, what shall I do? I got to the point where I said that. What shall I do? I did everything. What shall I do? And Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. But I was already baptized on that fifth Sunday. But it wasn't for the remission of my sins. It wasn't this. And I didn't join a church. God is going to add me to a church. Yes. Somebody explain that to me. And for the promise, the promise was to you and your children and all who are far off as many as the Lord God of all. And with many other words, they kept preaching and testifying and exhorting to them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. And those who gladly received his word were baptized. See, that's where the obedience to his word comes in at. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. Out of all them people, I don't know how many people was there, but every nation was represented. 3,000 people said what Ella said. I'm repentant. I want to be baptized. And then they continued steadfastly in apostles' doctrine and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayer. And you know what impressed me? You know what impressed me? My religion wasn't even here yet. Yeah. How in the world can my religion be right when they wasn't even here yet? Amen. And if they're not here yet, that means somebody created them. And that creation is M A N. You're right, man. Yes, God, oh my God. I said, but well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me find out where my religion started. Oh. My Lord just started in the first century. So I started doing some investigation, and back then, y'all, we didn't have computers. We had encyclopedias. <laughs> now, I know you young people don't know what that is. <laughs> So I went to Encyclopedia and I looked up religion. And then I looked up every religion that I was saved under. I thought I was saved. And you know what it said? 1500s. <laughs> this is 33 AD. <laughs> Jesus started this religion. Amen. And mine only started in the 1500s. I'm not through yet. I got to bring it down like this to y'all. I, got to. I went back to the book of John, because John I really love. And I went to John chapter 10, and I was reading John chapter 10. And when I got through reading John chapter 10, I got up. I got up and I said, I can't do this no more. So I went to uh, Reverend Brown, Donna's uncle, and I said, Reverend Brown, what we're doing is wrong. He said, what are you talking about? I said, I need to have a Bible study with you because what we're doing is wrong. We're not doing it the way the Bible said do it. So he said, okay, we are study. Now, this is a man that mentored me that I respected dearly. He can quote scriptures in his sleep. Okay? So we sat down and we talked about this. So he called up Reverend, um, um, uh, what's the man's name? Reverend Gary and a couple of more uh, uh, ministers. It was like an 11 fellowship Baptist fellowship. Yeah. And so he said, Kelvin needs to talk to you. That's my middle name. People that from back in the day don't call me Elvis. They call me by my middle name. They said, okay, let's make some time for him during the week. They said, we really love that deacon. He's a smart man. We love him. So I sat down and I talked with him. And I said, can somebody explain Acts 2.36 to Acts, uh, to verse 47 to me? So they all started looking at one another. The only thing I would deal with was this. And I said, before you answer me, give me a Bible answer. I said, don't pull out that black book that says Baptist. No. So give me this answer. I said, I'm about to lose my mind. I've read this, all 28 chapters of this, and my heart is pumping. I'm about to lose my mind because I did something I shouldn't have did. And those ministers start flipping papers, and I said, by the time you get to Acts 28, you ain't going to find Baptist in And one of the senior men that have been on the trail for a long time, he said, Kelvin, there's, this is what's wrong with you. You're young in the faith, and you've got to be trained. I said, with all due respect, that's not the answer I'm looking for because that answer didn't come out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And I said, respectfully, I'm saying. So it had got to a contention point in the room yeah. where Reverend Brown had to come to my rescue. 
And I said another thing, why are y'all calling yourselves reverend? Uh -huh. right. Holy and reverend is one of God's names. And that's when one of those men said, it's time for us to pray and told Reverend Brown, you got to deal with this young man. Oh I said, God. no, we do not. God has already dealt with him. Amen. You're right. I'm reading it. Now, y'all, I'm not trying to talk about anybody's religion, but what I am talking about, if you're going to know something, you better know the truth. And you better know it as truth, so when you stand before the truth, you're going to be truthful. Yes, Lord. Because the truth is the only thing God is going to know because he is true. Yes, Lord. Now, Jesus said, in vain do they worship me, teaching yes. the doctrine, yes. the commandments of men, and that's what I would like. Yes. So me and Donna studied separately, didn't even know what we were talking about, no doing with one another, not talking to one another. We came to the same conclusion on a Thursday night. I told Donna, I want to be baptized and be added to the church. I don't want to join a church with my baptism. I want to be added to the church for the remission of sins. I want to do it the same way he said, do it here. Yes, no. She said, me too. We called with the minister the next morning at a quarter to 11. We went to Trump where they, or where they had the pool and we got baptized. Yes, no. 31 years ago. Yes. And now when I stand, I can stand on this. Yes. When I explain my Christianity, yes. I explain it with this. Yes. And it's not a little black book. It's not a little black book. And they gave me the black book to study. Oh my God. Do not add to this and do not take away. <laughs> Nothing is going to stand with this it stands alone. Yes. Now I'm simply saying that to you if you're visiting, you do what I did. I didn't impulsively join nothing or no. believe nothing. You go and get the people that taught you. Yes. You sit down with them, and you tell them, let's just talk about the Bible. Mm -hmm. If they can give you a biblical answer, you need to get up yes. and go find the truth. That's all I'm saying. Yes. And the truth will set you free. Yes. Now, they did that. They asked those questions. He kept talking. And... Get down here to uh, verse 47. Well, verse 46. So, for generally daily, with one accord, they were coming to break of bread from outside. They ate their food in gladness and simplicity of the heart. Praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord did what? My person said that. Amen. To the what? Amen. Well, I joined. And the Bible says that God does the act. And God did the adding here because back in 36, starting in 36, they were obedient. God is not going to add you to his house unless you pay attention to the welcome sign. Amen. You ever get to a door and have a welcome mat? And you step on the mat and you clean your feet and go into the house? You ever get welcome when you get into the house? Welcome to my home? God is not going to welcome any of us into heaven unless... We abide by the rules. You know why? Because it's his house. Amen. You let just anybody in your home? Why should you think God should let anybody in his house? He said drunkards, liars, thieves, murderers, all that is not going to be in my house. Isn't that fair? Amen. You want a murderer in your house? No. Guess what? At the end of the night, you're not going to be there. He's going to murder you and take what you have. Why should God let those kinds of people in his house when in his house, people don't act like that. God didn't tell me to join nothing. He added me because of my obedience. Yeah. Now, if you got baptized any other way, you need to do like I do. You need to examine it for yourself and then go and do it in a sequence that God tells you to do it. And then go find somebody that's going to tell you the truth. Because yeah. right here, they said they steadfastly, what, or verse 42. And they continue steadfastly in apostles' doctrine and the fellowship and the breaking of bread and in prayer. Back in Mark 16, 16, he told them to do that. Tell them the things that I told you. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. He's going to remind you of all the things that I told you. All those years, y'all, for 90 years before the turn of the century, that's all the apostles said. They said nothing else. Take me up on it. For 28 years, Paul got in trouble for saying just this. And when he got back to Jerusalem and, and finally died, he said nothing else. And your religion, family's religion, and my family religion wasn't even there yet. Wasn't even there yet. 
And see, I like breaking it down like that so you can go home and do what I did. Yeah. You can examine it for yourself. Yeah. How in the world can something in the 1500s save me when in 1 AD, 33 AD, it was established? Have you any idea what that means to God when you stand up and boast to God on Judgment Day that my pastor told me something? Oh my God. Your pastor told you this. This is what he better have told you. And then he's going to take all the names off. Hey. That's all I want you to do. Don't get mad at me. Please don't get mad at me. I love you from the bottom of my heart. And you know what I'm telling you is true. Pull me to the side and say, Alex, you need to explain that whole Baptist thing to me again. So explain that whole Muslim thing to me again. Y'all, I cried. I'm not lying to you. I'm just so emotional now. I cried. I had migraines and a cure. Don't you know it was hard for me to walk away from those religions when my whole family is dead? Yes. Don't you know what it's like when I go to family reunions and on Sunday we go to the Church of Christ and on Sunday they all go all over the place and we all meet back and have dinner? Yes. You know how hard that is? Amen. But God only asked one son to die. He only had one. Amen. He's only coming back for one church and that's the church that believes in this. And you know I'm telling you the truth because you already know that what those guys are telling you is not true because you say it all the time. Yes, so. Well, is the Church of Christ perfect? No, only the doctrine is perfect. Amen. Amen. People go to the Church of Christ, you don't find this, get up. Get up. Don't let your soul be in jeopardy sitting with a group of religious people who's going to be judged by God. Amen. Don't do that to yourself. All this stuff we can do on Sunday, we're going to come in here and listen to somebody that's going to take us to the door of hell and help us walk through. <laughs> Does that make any sense to you? Do you have any idea what it's like sinning? Sinning is the best thing in the world. For sin. For sinning. Don't you know if you lie, you will get to the top? Don't you know if you steal, you can steal your way to the top? Wall Street do it every day. But this life is going to get you to the throne room. Amen. You're going to live forever. I'll take too much of your time. If you haven't done it the way God asked you to do it, I'm only begging you to do it the way God asked you to do it so you can be guaranteed eternal life. It's simple. The pool is on the second floor. Seaside Park is down the street. Humble Church of Christ got a pool. I can back out you there. You're going to do it in the sequence that God asks you to do. He who believes and is baptized shall be saved. You repent of your sins and say, Father, I did something wrong here. It's not the way you asked me to do it. So some of you may be sitting here in that category. Or yeah. well, you may have not been baptized at all. Now, if you, be in the, if you fit in this other group, this other group is for people who have disconnect from the body. They don't live right anymore. Amen. And it's been six days since we met. Don't let six more days come and you're still in your sin because God can come back at any time. And if you're not abiding in Him, you're not part of the branch. Amen. He's going to cut you off. Amen. Now, on Sunday mornings, historically, that's the two groups that, that, that fall in line with the throne those who are sinners and those who are saints that have fell out of the way. And in some of our cases, those who have been baptized into man's doctrine, you still are on the sinner's side. Because mm -hmm. you haven't been covered by the blood of Jesus, so God never knew you in the first place. If you give me the opportunity this week, I explain it to you, I show it to you, and when you get mad like I got mad, first thing you're going to ask me to do is say, Ella, I have enough, I don't want to hear no more. And then you're going to start studying it like I did. Yeah. 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 I spent my whole life, for the rest of my life, that's all I'm going to do is tell people this. I'm not going to do nothing else. I don't care what they say. I don't care if they hate me for it. The only thing I'm looking for them to do is to believe it and then be baptized and then live with God forever and then thank me like you. So we'll live you when you die and you see that heaven, you'll say, mm, I'm so glad I did what that man told me to do. I'm so glad I did what the Bible told me to do because it's real. Because remember, no atheist has come back and told us that it's always good. But there's no dead atheist. They don't tell you that. When you die and trying to catch that last breath, you don't know who God is because he's the one that's going to give you the next. 